I actually give Margaret the podium. I forgot to, hold on, give you a little background on her amazing experience. So let me just do that really quick, hold on. So um, Margaret is one of our um, existing members. So we're very happy that she is um, helping us out by taking uh, the initiative on offering her services. So Margaret Hernandez Brown is the founder and chief digital strategist for socializela.com. A full service digital marketing and training agency, Margaret helps companies build digital presence, presence maximize social media and develop profitable marketing systems. We all need that, right? Uh, Margaret helps companies um, build a digital press uh, presence with to maximize social media and develop profitable marketing systems, which I already said. She is pa so passionate about the social business, social media business that she has created. The um, hashtag flex your influence community and digital marketing planner, a comprehensive guide to achieving a profitable online president presence. Today, socializela.com has experienced explosive growth while helping clients achieve success globally. She travels around the country and offers comprehensive online training, helping professionals get noticed. Margaret and her team prove that there's value in getting noticed. Connect with Margaret on Instagram and Twitter at Marge Marie B. With that said, I'm going to turn it over to Margaret and we're ready to hear all her words of wisdom. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. It's so great to be here. Um, I see some familiar faces. Andrea, hi been so long. <laughs> Andrew is probably one of the oldest business connections that I have from when I started my business 11 years ago. So um, one thing that I've realized through COVID is that being a, an 11 year old business, I, I realized that I am tried and true. And I think a lot of us can say that about ourselves. Um, you know, there's definitely been some, some, some down <laughs> in the last couple of months uh, or month. Um, you know, I'm sure you've experienced the same thing. Some clients have decided I'm going to hold off till this thing is over. Who's heard that this, this month, I'm going to hold off and to see, just to see what's going on. So um, I am definitely a glass full type of a gal. So, um, so I'm just waiting it out. Um, I actually, stepped into like the future and I actually hired an Instagram um, specialist, which I've wanted to do for a while. And it's like, why not do it when sales are halted? Why not hire someone? <laughs> but I'm really excited because um, it just kind of sets the tone. And so anyway, that's just me. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, it's giving me a, what is it doing? It's giving, <laughs> I've never seen that before. Um, what is it doing here? One second. I've never, well, we all know that Zoom just got an upgrade. Okay, there we go. Oh, there you go, all right. Security. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so I should be able to do that now. So anyway, I created this uh, digital marketing bingo uh, to make it fun um, to go over like all the different elements of digital marketing. And um, one of the things I'm actually going to go live on later on today, so I'm not going to talk about it now is marketing during COVID. Like what is appropriate, what is not appropriate uh, what are people expecting? Um, I know a lot of us have already received like a thousand emails from anyone who's ever been given our email to tell us how they're dealing with COVID. And in some, in some respect, it's, you know, it's warranted in others. It's like, okay, I didn't need to hear from, you know, this restaurant I haven't been to in 10 years. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, there is a way to properly, um, you know, connect with 
your clients. If you haven't already sent them a message, I know I had a client today say, I haven't sent anything out. What should I send? You can just, you don't need to reshare all of the hand washing tips. Everybody knows that right now at this stage in the game, if you need something to say, I would just give a well wish that you hope people are doing well and that they're safe and healthy just so they can hear from you. So anyway, Digital Marketing Flex Your Influence was actually, bingo, was actually created um, probably end of last year. I just had not put together the, the bingo card. So this is like pre-COVID, so I will definitely put in some, um, some relevant, you know, now examples, but definitely if you have questions at the end, we will answer them. If you were able to access the file, um, you'll see the uh, bingo card. So, um, and also I had other people ask me, they're like, I wanna do a bingo game <laughs> for, um, for my people. So I created a template in Canva and you can get that at socializela.com slash bingo. So um, you can get that template and make it your own in Canva. Um, okay, so let's get started. You know who I am, Margaret Brown, in business for 11 years. I just love what I do. I love talking about this subject. Um, it is definitely my, not only my passion, and but it, it's, it's like my contribution to, uh, to business owners, small business, women-owned business, my, minority business. Um, it is such it's an ever-changing industry and so my job is to stay on the front lines I spend a lot of time a lot of resources and a lot of money every year just making sure that I'm staying up to date with everything that's going on but most importantly being relevant to my people to my industry um, I'm sorry to my because it's mul I'm multi-industry I work with construction um, do you guys want to mute yourself maybe? Because I feel like we're hearing a lot of background. Yeah, hold on. Let me see. Where do okay. I go? There we go. Okay. Uh oh, now I'm hearing myself in an echo. <laughs> okay. Is anybody on their anybody computer and their uh, phone? No? Yeah, whoever's calling on a phone needs to mute themselves. Can you guys, yeah. Would you is there a way for you to mute everybody? When I did that, though, what happened was. Yeah, Okay, got it. Okay, got it. Okay, is that better? Um, I think you should mute also, just while we're doing the presentation. Right. Hold on. Twilight zone. <laughs> I think it. I think it's coming from somebody whose phone number ends in one one oh one. How do I hang up? Maybe they need to go on mute to mute their phone. Okay, I think that's it. Can everyone still yeah. hear me? Okay, cool. Let's do this. All right, so. Now, for those of you who do not like games and do not like bingo, this is just a glorified checklist, okay? <laughs> so just think of it that way. But definitely take some time to see which elements you already have a good handle on. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this. It's 2020. I think all of us understand the importance of having a digital marketing presence. Um, I am not the type of a person who says, hey, you can only have 
you know, digital is the only way to go. Absolutely not. I still believe in shaking hands when appropriate, um, going to marketing events, sending, uh, you know, mail, regular mail. Um, and of course, uh, I, I love paper. I created the planner because I, I love to write out ideas on paper. So um, I love to mix and mingle all marketing where it's, appropriate. So we're going to start with the freebie. So the freebie is usually the se the middle section and it's like, okay, that's where I get my free. Um, but unfortunately in flex your influence bingo, that's just like, don't leave that square until you know your target. So know who your mark, not only marketing to, but where they hang out online. And I will tell you that um, in business, you know, a lot of us want to immediately say like, oh, LinkedIn, that's where all my business people are. Um, but as you all know, and I'm sure this will not sound like a surprise, um, women specifically in business are doing business on Facebook. So Facebook is definitely a key driver to engagement and to building relationships. So knowing your target is important because you can all you will also know where you should spend your time it's not it's not profitable to be on every single channel if you're not utilizing them so that's definitely a key so the next three boxes um, and that's how this presentation will go i'm just going to go i'm going to run through these boxes with you um, and give you kind of the reason why I'm doing them in this order. So knowing your audience is number one. Number two is your mindset. These boxes are about like making the commitment. Like, have you made the commitment to learn a new skill or a new technique going into this stay home, stay uh, shelter in place has really caused a lot of people to have to stretch me included. Um, yeah, I have all the technology I need and I understand how all of this works, but in these past three weeks, I have put out more digital content in a short period of time than I normally do in like a six month period. And why? Because I want to stay top of mind. I don't want to retreat. I want to move forward um, and provide value to the people who follow us. So I'm committed. Are you committed? Number two, identify inspiring uh workplaces so i love to use the hashtag work p-l-a-y-c-e i if if we are friends or if we follow each other on instagram like one of my favorite things to do is to work in different spots so outside at disneyland at the beach because my job depends on me being creative and so i know that in marketing we have to be creative we have to be able to step outside the box. Um, that helps to build confidence. It helps us to think differently. And so I'm really, really, really um, big on stressing the fact that you find places that you love to work. I love to work at Mimi's Cafe um, at their little breakfast bar. <laughs> they just, because it's like constant coffee, iced tea, water, and then like breakfast and lunch, you know, for depending on how long I'm staying there. So find places that really inspire you and move you and um, have a couple of those. So don't leave this square until you identify at least three places that you love to work. Um, number three on this is unplug and strategize. So kind of in that same vein is you definitely want to, when you're creating your content, creating new campaigns, new launches, new angles, we've got to get away from our phone because distractions, I mean, right? Yeah. So, um, so yes, unplug to strategize. So now that you know, like, okay, my got my target audience, I've got my head right. I know I need to do this. I'm committed to it. Um, what's the foundation of all of this? I can't tell you how many times I talk to people, business owners, marketing, uh, you know, VPs, directors of marketing. Um, and they say, I tried social media and it did not work. So 
I hear that so many times. Like it almost is funny inside of my heart when someone says it. Because I, I, my next follow-up question is, well, tell me, what did you try? What did you try? Because there's so, there, social media, digital marketing, whatever you want to call it, is not a one-size-fits-all for everyone. And there are just so many variables. So that's why I'm very much um, a like I am very much a person who teaches that you need to like pick a couple things that you can commit to and do them well. Like there's no need to do everything all at once. So the foundation for your success lies in these four boxes and that's blocking time. We have three boxes that are just about blocking time. The key to your success online or offline marketing is all about how much time and preparation you are going to give to that area of your business. So a lot of times marketing becomes the nice to do and not the have to do because it's not a fire. Fires in our business are clients that need our attention, sales, the sales aren't coming in. I, I also get phone calls where people are like, I need to make sales. What do I need to do? And it's like, what I teach, what I do as an agency or as a teacher is all about building relationships and that builds your referral base. It re builds all your SEO, like so much. It's not really something that happens overnight, unfortunately. So blocking time to do these things is so key. You, you need to block time to engage, okay? Engaging is, all right, Margaret, I am going to commit to Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Awesome. Not only do you need to commit to posting regularly on those channels, but you need to make time to authentically engage with people, not spamming people with messages. I mean, that could definitely be a strategy. That's not what we're going to talk about today, but this is just relationship. And I want to give you an example. All of us here have been to a networking event. Imagine going to a networking event, walking in that room, sitting down at a table and just waiting for people to come to you. That is not a very impactful way to network, right? Like you can't wait for people to come up and talk to you because you'll be, might be waiting a, a really long time or you might get one or two people that come up to you. So that's the equivalent of having a profile on any of these channels is you've showed up to the party. That's awesome, but not everything. The next way to approach a networking event is you arrive, you sit at the table, but in front of you, you have all your marketing materials. So you have your brochure, your business card, you even have a really cute promo item, but you're sitting down and you're just waiting for people to come get it. Again, not super impactful. That's the exact same online as if you have a profile and you are posting even regularly, okay? The best way to network is you show up, you shake hands, you're working that room, you're talking to people, asking them what they do, why are they here, how long have you been a member? Or, you know, oh, you're on the board, how do you like that, how long have and you're really engaging in a real conversation. And online, that's the equivalent of having um, an online presence showing up and then also going out and engaging on other people's pages. I'm telling you, it is, I have been teaching that for at least eight to nine years and it has never changed. It's only gotten more stronger, okay? So that's the engagement time. Block time that you're actually going to record your content or go live. Like all of that needs to be on your calendar. Um, I'm not sure about you, but when I go live, except for during this, like if this was not COVID, I probably would be wearing a blazer right now. But I don't know about you guys. I'm just kind of like getting through life at the moment. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, so the other thing is you want to block all your marketing time. So I like to block all my marketing time. I know when I'm 
working on my videos. I know when I'm working on writing content um, and all of that. So here's an example of how I block my time. This is just my marketing time. I know, but I'm a marketer. So my calendar, like when I work, when I do this with a student, their calendars don't ever look like mine, but I have to be like the master, right? <laughs> okay. This square, oh wait, hold on. I missed a square. The last part of your foundation is organizing and delegating. So do you have a team? Do you have an assistant? Do you have a marketing department? Do you have an outsource agency that you're working with? Like all of these people need to be on board. Weekly meetings, no, like that's it. You need to have weekly meetings um, and you need to be able to organize and delegate. I think delegating was one of the most difficult tasks for me. It's still something that I struggle with. Why? Because I can get everything done so fast. <laughs> so why not do it all? So, but anyway, it's still so important to delegate and organize. Very important. Okay. This square gets its very own slide. <laughs> because this is the most important piece to making your digital marketing work. And that is having real calls to action. It's not enough to say, I'm here to help you message me, like give them a link, like give them the next steps to take with you. Because when we leave people wondering what they should do next, they are now distracted by a zillion other things. So make it really easy. So as you are creating your content, you want to make sure that you are providing at least two to three consistent calls to action. Now, when you have an event happening or a new launch happening, then you know, you're know you gonna have additional calls to action. But like regular calls to action for me are to buy the planner. Like that's like number one, because that's an easy thing that people can buy. It's not a, a huge investment. And if they've liked the value I've given them in something that I wrote or a video, then that's an easy call to action. Another easy call to action is to book time on my calendar. So that's maybe not something you want to go public with, but I do it every once in a while. I've never been inundated with uh, requests, so, so it's good for now. Um, but yeah, those are really good calls to action, okay? Planning, planning, planning is so important. Um, if you notice, we're not even to the, the part about writing content yet. Like all of these fundamental areas are like what you need to do before you can really like get into your digital marketing. Think about these things, like how are you going to get around them? And I also want to tell you that one of my favorite sayings is done is better than perfect. So um, in past, I am a perfectionist and I'm sure there's a lot of us right here that are with me. <laughs> um, but now I know that done is better than perfect. I do show up with my best, but at the same time, I can't always say every time like, oh, well, I need a camera crew here today. I'm going live with all my Latinas in Los Angeles. Like I gotta look good, no. Today I am going to, I am, I am here, I'm showing up, I am bringing you my A game, but I am using my computer camera. <laughs> All right, so planning. Okay, this is like one of my pro tips. Like do this, do this, do this. Create themes for every month and every, or every quarter. Some people said monthly is way too often or every quarter. And let me tell you what I mean. Here's my themes for the entire year. And what this does is I need to save time. Okay. And just so you know, everything that I create as far as like my teaching goes and my community and all of that is all based on people having like not a lot of time to do this <laughs> because a lot of us are doing this ourselves or in small business. We have someone who does marketing, but they also wear like three, four, 10 other hats. So, um, so yeah, so we need to like be really, um, really uh, efficient. <laughs> so 
coming up with a theme. I do this at the, like in October, November for the next year. And like for January, my theme was celebrate. So a lot of the content I came up with was about celebrating. So like celebrating my team, celebrating the wins from 2019, celebrating, you know, whatever, like celebrate your week, celebrate your day. Um, not because I'm lazy, but because sometimes, and I know this by experience, that some of the, one of the hardest things for us to do is to, is to have content to write. Like you are the expert in your field. Who here is the expert in their field? We all are, right? <laughs> I would hope that you are the expert in your field. And I trust that you are. And so I love that thumbs up. <laughs> um, and so as the expert in your field, if somebody gives you just like a smidge to write on, if they say, oh, you're, you're into fitness. Okay. Tell me where to start. Like, so if you have that down as a theme, like, like jump, re jumpstart your fitness goals. Cause like everybody's in, in January, everyone's like fit, 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 fit. And then in June, it's like, get fit for the summer. Well, maybe like jumpstart your goals in March or April, re jumpstart them because you know, they say like, we give up on our goals a little, a little quickly. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so pick that as a theme because you as the expert can take that one topic and break it out into like 10 different branches. You can go live, you can create stories, you can create blogs and all kinds of stuff. So that's why themes are super important. And if you have questions, you can also put them in the chat and I will look periodically and, um, and I'm happy to answer them. And we'll also have questions at the end. So planning along with those themes, I like to come up with a list of blog topics. So like here's, here's um, a list I created for this first quarter and you don't have to have my planner to do this guys, but it does, it's a nice guide, but uh, I also <laughs> have one of these that I write everything on just a notebook, <laughs> all my ideas. So um, I love to write. Okay. And I, I have like two iPhones, a, an iPad and you know, all the technology, but please just give me a pen and paper. <laughs> okay. So um, also make a list of your photo opportunities. So I call, I have a little saying called spontaneously planned. So um, my spontaneously planned content, and again, if you follow me, you've definitely seen it. I have um, a sticker with my mantra on it. It says, be wildly excited about the possibilities. I'm looking around because I'm like, okay, I don't have a sticker on me right now. <laughs> um, but have something that you can you can take with you that's not heavy. You can travel with it. You can take it on the road. You have it at your desk. That way you don't have, you can take pictures when you're like in a cool setting, but if you don't feel like being in a selfie at the moment or taking a, an awkward picture with someone you don't know, or you just don't feel like it, then at least you can take a picture of your product. And now you have something to post online. So here's another one of my spontaneously planned. And these are so easy to take. And then this is the sticker I have. That's what it shows. So just really easy stuff, guys. Um, but that's how I plan a lot of my photos. And then um, the last thing on planning is create a content plan. You will be the first to see this, but I'm going to use this as an example because I just created it. Remember I said I've been creating more content than I know what to do with. Oh my gosh, where is it? I just want you to see it because a lot of times people think that a content plan has to be really, really uh, sophisticated. And I am here to tell you that it does not have to be that way. I mean, it is sophisticated, but it doesn't have to be hard. So this content plan, I just created this 90 day ready to use content plan. You can make this on your own. Select all the categories that you want to use. I created 11 humor, happy industry tips, community, relatable word of the day, promotional, engaging questions, real talk, 
miscellaneous, and then plan spontaneity. And then down below in a monthly calendar, it's like every day of the week has a, a topic type and you just drag and drop something and create it. And this is done for three months. So anyway, that is created on a Google document. And I have tried all of the fancy softwares in 11 years, trust me, I have seen it all. And nothing compares <laughs> to a, a good old Google Doc. And it really does the trick. Let me go back to my presentation. Okay, I hope that was helpful. I know that was very fast. Okay, our next, let me see here. Can we ask a question? Um, yeah, please ask a question. If it if it's not, if I if it's too long or something, I don't answer it right this minute. I will get to it at the end. But definitely ask. Will you be sharing the PowerPoint presentation? Absolutely. Okay. Um, the nuts and bolts of your digital marketing, of course, know your hashtags, and I like to keep them in a um, in a note so that way I just copy and paste them whenever I need them. And I have them on my, you know, computer, on my phone, on my tablet. Um, another really great thing to do is align with your partners and your friends. Like all of us here are a network. And that's why I asked you what your Instagram was, because I will definitely follow you. We are, um, we are, there's strength in numbers and we are our own like little army. So definitely, you know, pair up um and do all that okay because it's just really great um also you can even have like more sophisticated partnerships online where you like share each other's content your affiliates you get you know um you know there's like a monetary affiliation and all of that that's really great way to um to move maneuver but i want to also tell you that my hashtag is that I use is called is hashtag flex your influence. And it's important that I tell you that the reason I've created that is because in the small business community, in the Latina community, in the women business community, a lot of us, we like hide our light. Like we are not out there. We're not, we know we're good. Like deep down, we know how awesome we are. But we don't want to, you know, make a business about everything that we have to offer. And trust me, I go through this all of the time. So I have to talk myself down because it's not natural for me. So you are an influencer. I don't care if you don't, if you have 10 followers right now, you are an influencer, whether it's offline, whether it's online, whether it's in your industry, whether it's in your city, whether it's in your um, your neighborhood, you're an influencer, you do have influence on people. So you can use your influence for your business, for your community, for all sorts of wonderful, um, in wonderful ways. So definitely, definitely, definitely um, let's flex your influence. That's what all of this is about. That's why it's called flex your influence, bingo. <laughs> but these are all the, the buttons that need to be pushed in order for it to really work and take off. Um, subscribe to software that's going to make your life easier, but just on the other side of that, it says stop the bleeding. So <laughs> do not start paying for software because it's cool and you're not going to use it, please. It's just like, it's not smart. Take your time. Um, I'm going to give you guys my free Facebook group because you can ask me questions like that about software and I will help you. Um, but don't be like, just use what you'll use, but don't go overboard and then definitely measure your efforts. We're not going to get into that, but if you're not measuring month after, after month, then you don't know what's working and what's not. Okay. Next slide, be proactive. So like I said, people were like, Hey, can I, I want to make a bingo card for my business. That's what I would call a digital download. So I'm sure we've all downloaded freebies before. And what we are doing is giving that person our email in return for this freebie. And I'm always happy to do it if it's someone that I trust. Now, if they go crazy, 
and start emailing me 10 times a day, I'm probably going to opt out because it's too much. So know your audience, know your people, know how much is too much. Um, but also don't be afraid to email. So I know there's going to be people on both sides. <laughs> um, just so you guys know, the type of marketing uh, coach or consultant that I am is I am very big on building relationships. I am not into, I am not a expert, let me say, on get rich quick, spam to sell. I don't do that. I do not do that. It's not what I believe in and it's not what I believe works in the long haul. Um, so, so yeah. Okay. So some of you might be thinking, well, tell us how to get a million in, um, Instagram followers tomorrow. That's not a real strategy. <laughs> I say, build it. If it's, if it's slow, awesome. If you're getting engagement, awesome. Um, but that's what we're here to do. We're here to build our, in, our influence, our sphere of influence, our network. We don't want a million followers that are robots from India. That does nothing for us. Okay. All right. Next content streams. Okay. So like that content template I was, I create, I, I showed you, um, I'm currently brainstorming a side visit. Oh, okay. Ooh, very good. Very good. Oops. Sorry. I didn't say that was private. Um, I'll be quiet. <laughs> um, batch your content. So there's content that you can batch. And what I mean by that is you're sitting there who uses Canva. Okay. A few of you do. If you use something like Canva or Illustrator, awesome. Somewhere where you can have templates. If you do not know what, if you're not using anything, use Canva to create your content. All of these slides were, act, okay, good. Were created on Canva and it just makes life a lot easier. <laughs> um, but batching your content means you can have one day I'm sitting here drinking my coffee and I have eight inspirational quotes and I am going to add them to my template. And now I have like eight Mondays worth of inspirational quotes. Inspirational quotes never go out of style, but it's important that you share your own branding. And so you just cite who said it and you're golden. I know you know what I'm talking about. That's like, that's, you know, that's a beginner tip. But for those of you who don't, definitely when you're using quotes, add it on to your own branding. Canva is an awesome way to do that. Industry tips, same thing. Use a different template, but still with your same brand colors. And there you go. You can do like 10 industry tips and you can have content for the next two months. And that is just, and it just makes your life so much easier when you don't show up to Wednesday and be like, okay, what am I posting on social media today? It doesn't get done or it's not cohesive or it just is not consistent. And then lastly, create those templates that you and your team can use so it is easy to batch that content. So the last two things that we will talk about is email marketing. And then again, I'll touch on measuring your efforts, but email marketing, if you had to say, Margaret, what is the most valuable piece of marketing? Like if I were to compartmentalize each part of marketing, Facebook likes, Instagram follows, LinkedIn, the most valuable piece is your database that you have inside of your MailChimp or a CSV file. Because if we all remember, like there are times where Instagram just goes down, Facebook just goes down, LinkedIn, not so much, but definitely our resources can be taken from us. But an email list, if MailChimp goes down, fine, we'll just move over to Constant Contact. We'll just move over to Active Campaign. We've got options. So it's very important that everything you do is to build your email list. Build that list because that's where you can remarket to people without paying. Um, and it's just a really, really great way to stay in front of people. I have people who have been on my list for like the length of time I've been in business. And I will get a random call saying, Margaret, I'm ready to uh, work on my marketing now. 
and I'll, you know, I'll thank them and say I'm excited to hear from them again. And I'll go to my email list just to see like what they've been up to, like how often they look at my emails, click on things. And some of these people don't even open the email. So don't even be afraid of people not opening your email because it's just enough for them to even just see that you're still alive and kicking, but they're not opening your email on that day because they're just not ready to, to do business with you. And that's okay. So really cool stuff, guys, if we get consistent with this and I mean, I'm sure some of you are already doing a lot of really great hot things that are, you know, giving you referrals. Like what are our goals? talking about measuring your efforts, we need to start with like, what are our goals? What do we want to happen? I want to build my list. I want to build my following. And then I want to build how many discovery sessions I'm doing with people. So like have an idea of what marks you want to make and then build your content around that. Because I can't say I want to sell a million planners and never talk about my planner. And I've done that before. I really have because I'm like, if people want my planner, they know I have it. They'll just go get it. No, it doesn't work like that. And I think like this sometimes. <laughs> so if I do it, I know others do it. You need to look at your, your, your services, your products, and how can you keep it in front of people, not constantly selling it though. So remember like 80% of your content should be educational, value add, community driven, motivational, and 20% is sales. Okay. So don't be 80% sales, 20%. Like, right. You know, it's just people will turn you off. Every, everybody know what I'm talking about. And trust me, as you build relationships with people and you're just being, like, you're, you're giving genuine content, content, you will get the clients. I am sure of it. I'm telling you, that's why my mantra is be wildly excited about the possibilities because I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen, but I will tell you that I know that I know that I know that if you are consistent, you're giving quality content and you're being genuine, you're going to get the business. It's just the way this works. So. If you have questions, I'm going to actually put my email here because some people, I know there's a lot of times people don't want to ask their question. So I am going to put my email here. I'm going to give you a resource. So if you want, you can get that content plan. And I think that is it. Um, oh, and the free Facebook group I want to give to you. Margaret, can I ask a question? Yeah, go for it. How often do you do you suggest and is and maybe this is dependent on one's uh, business or or line of work, but mm -hmm. how often do you think you should post every day, or should it Great be? Great question. Okay. So that content plan I showed you was seven was six to seven days a week. Um, it all goes back to how much time you have to commit. So if you say you have like two hours a week, I would focus on three posts per week. Now, again, it depends on your industry. If you're in the fitness industry or you're in the, um, you have an e-commerce store, you probably need to be posting a lot more than three times a week. Um, do you mind sharing what kind of industry you're in? A financial industry. Financial. Okay. And um, do you have any like any easy opt-in products or is everything like high level, sit down with me and let's go over your plan? Yeah, it's, it's pretty customizable type of work. So I would have to sit down with them, okay. not anything like just, you know. This is what I would do. I would do in a perfect world, of course. I would do two to three posts per week but I would go live once a week and answering one question. Perfect. And then I would take that video. Oh, this is the best guys. Take your Facebook live. I'm, I'm typing it here. Move it to YouTube. Add it to your blog. 
this is like this is like a a plus plus student okay <laughs> i don't always get this done but i'm telling you if you can do this you will be making the most of your content um and then do a linkedin published article and then of course share to all channels and then of course add to e-blast so maybe you do like a monthly e-blast or two times monthly e-blast with little links to your videos video somebody asked how important is video video is everything video is everything because why people want to see you they want to touch you they want to hear they want to hear from you they want to hear your voice thank you you're so welcome does that help you yes it does okay great 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 okay let's see did i miss any other questions you covered the okay yeah the value of videos big 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 um didn't catch did you say you would share your master plan um okay so the mass the um this you mean the one that i shared on screen that's um i put a link to that here yeah it's socializela.com slash 90 day wait is it 90 days or 90 days 90 day let's see any other questions how would we market the facebook oh good question okay great 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 so follow-up question to that do you pre like do you have can you schedule it on your calendar like when you'll be ready to go live That was a question. Um, the question back to you is, yeah, on Facebook, like, do you know when you're gonna go live? Okay, if you, cause I, I asked that because I can, I, it's very hard for me to say when I'm gonna do things because, yeah. If you know the day and time that you're gonna go, the way you can market your Facebook Live <laughs> is by, um, you can schedule it so if you go to facebook i do you guys mind if i share my screen stop share i was already sharing it <laughs> okay gosh you're gonna see my whole screen so embarrassing so much stuff going on um okay so if you go to Facebook, you can pre-schedule a Zoom. I mean, I'm sorry, a Facebook Live. And that will actually show a countdown and you can start inviting people to it. So like this one, how I flex my influence, that was actually a, um, a scheduled one. So where is the little schedule button? Anyway, I don't want to take up too much time because I know there's other questions and technical questions can always get a little out of hand because, but anyway, yes. So you can do that. You can also send a email to your database and you can start marketing it that way. But let's say that you did a, a like that um, Facebook live I did yesterday has 600 views, but do you know how many people were on it live? Only like two. So don't be dis. I know, because people like sometimes they just can't be there or they have to tune out. So don't be discouraged by small numbers, because if you use this little technique, the fa the um, I'm gonna repost it. If you use this little technique, you will get mileage out of it. And I will give you guys a tip. Sometimes I do Facebook lives that are meant for one person who I'm trying to sell. <laughs> So they might say, oh, you know, Margaret, I've been thinking about blah, 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 blah. I go live and then I say, hey, I just went live about that. Let me send you the video. And they're like, oh, it's not, it's not tricky or anything like that. It's just helping people to make a decision about you being the, 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 the person that they should do business with. Okay, let's see. Did I, um, podcasting. 
Okay, here's another very transparent. Um, thing that I'm going to say. I launched a podcast last year. I believe in podcasting. Again, do not, don't worry about who's going to, it is an amazing way to become visible, credible, and likable. It's amazing. It is not difficult to launch a podcast at all. Anybody can do it. I have a checklist about that. <laughs> the problem with the podcast for me anyway, is keeping up with it. It is a lot of work. So right currently I have eight episodes in my podcast, hashtag flex your influence. And I need to, I've been teasing a season two for a very long time, <laughs> at least six months. So I have to do it. And this, this is prompting me to do that, but it is a lot of fun and there's a lot of different ways. So yes, if you can, awesome. Oh, you're so welcome, Betty. Um, have you shared? who your client is? Who do you? Oh, I don't really share who my clients are on uh, social media. No, because a lot of our people don't want people to know that someone else is doing their marketing. So that's fine by me. I do share testimonials, but just first names. And then of course they have to be a reference if, if people need them, but you don't have to be compelled to share your people. Um, so you don't have to be an uncustomized pitch to vengeance. YouTube pitched. Um, so you don't have to repeat yourself. Oh yeah. 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 Mm hmm. Yep. I, or if people are like, um, they're, they keep saying, Oh, I want to talk to you, but I don't have any time. I'm just not ready. Like they're not ready. Have a video that you can send them to say, this is just what you can expect and make sure your videos are pretty short because people do not have a high, a big um, attention span. Um, I'm a ghost communicator. Oh, okay. Yeah. So people don't want to know that. Um, so I, um, Africa, I have a lot of free resources. Um, I will list them in one of the biggest one is my, is the free Facebook group, modern marketing support group. I posted that link here. So you're more than welcome to go there. And I have a lot of, uh, of free trainings in there. Uh, length of time for videos. It depends on what kind of videos, just so you know, if you do a Facebook live and you want to send it to you and you want to download it for your Instagram TV, it has to be under 15 minutes. So once I go over 15 minutes, I'm like, Oh, now I have to edit it. <laughs> that was one more step I didn't want to do. So um, under 15 minutes, you can take that right into Instagram TV. If it's more than that, then just maybe bypass Instagram TV unless you know how to um, edit. A really great edit, we have one minute, and so I'm, I don't know how, um, I don't, I wanna be respectful of everyone's time, but the last thing I'll say is I love um, um, iMovie on the iPhone or Video Shop or and or together video shop app. It's like $60 a year and it is incredible what you can do with it. <laughs> I get so many compliments and I'm like, if you only knew I'm doing this on my phone, I've given you guys a lot of information today. TMI. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I think that's it. Did you? Yeah. Video shop. Video shop. You're welcome. Great. Thanks so much, Margaret, for the information. I know I just jumped back on and, and uh, <laughs> um, from what I caught it, it, it sounded like it was very great. And um, I'm glad for the engagement that we had in the chat box. Um, I'm also really intrigued that it looks like we have a pretty wide reach. I, I saw some names. We have people that are from the Bay Area um, that even joined us today. So that's one of the wonderful parts about going virtual is uh, we could we get a um, we get to interact with people at a much exactly. greater distance. So, um, Livier, I know that you uh, recorded the session, so we can go ahead and get that sent over. She'll send it out afterwards. Um, and this was really helpful and useful information. Awesome, uh, Margaret. Like you said, um, you gave us a ton of um, secret weapons. But the bottom line is, if we don't know how to use them then we need to reach out to you and say, okay, we need help, we're ready. 
<laughs> right? Yes. So if you all think the tools you need, are great, but you got to actually uh, take advantage of them, right? And sometimes we have to just stay in our own lane and do what we do best, and leave the the hard stuff to the professionals. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you if you need help, like I said, the first step you can join the free Facebook group. Second well, step, if you wanted like hand holding and temp more templates every month, I have our Flex Your Influence community, which is a, an annual membership. Okay. And then if you're like, I don't want to do this at all, then we have the done for you agency side. And that's where my team is. That's me. We're, we're creating all your content for you. So if you have any info, if you need any information, I'm going to put my email here and we can just have a talk and see what's, what you need. Wonderful. So nice to meet you guys. I can't wait to see you in person. Right. When we finally have the big mega reunion, right? A church revival where we get to see everybody in person. Yeah. <laughs> when we first started the session, I failed to introduce myself because while I was trying to get this uh, session going and fill in for Alyssa because she's a pro at it, I was also multitasking next door getting my husband ready for his Zoom union meeting that he's the president and he's never done anything like this. And then he walks in very nonchalant at the last minute, like, I'm ready, I'm a cover here. But in any event, I'm Livia Ramirez, the immediate past president, and probably um, one of the longest uh, term members. I uh, am very, very uh, committed to this organization because of what we do for uh, small business owners, Latinas, entrepreneurs, and corporate professionals. And that's to empower you and to help you grow your business, grow your career, and to really maintain the community of fellowship and kinship in an area where we lift each other up and we empower each other to grow in all aspects of our life. And this is especially a really important time for us to reach out to each other because this quarantine is a little maddening, but at the same time, it's actually creating some level of being grounded, right? Slowing us down so that we can appreciate everything and everybody and really try and catch our breath, even though it seems like what we're doing now is even more time consuming and we have less time. We're just parked. We're just in one place, but we have great outreach with all the technology. And we are very thankful to you, Margaret, for offering to host this session um, for us because you gave us a tremendous amount of information and we greatly appreciate it. Thank you. So at this point, Alyssa, I'll let you go ahead and step in and ask people, there's Anna, ask people if they want to go ahead and introduce themselves or have a want or a need that they'd like to uh, put on the table. Yeah, so um, I, I know it's four o'clock, so we're ending our session, but there's a couple things if anybody wants to stay around, we'll do some self-introduction, some important information. Um, just a reminder, our next session is going to be on Tuesday, uh, three o'clock, same time. Um, we have Lucia Lopez, who's an employment attorney that's going to be joining us. Um, she's going to be answering a lot of questions in regards to even solopreneurs um, and with all the changes with COVID and making sure that you protect your business. Um, so talking about kind of workers comps and the liabilities associated with um, still having your employees work right now. Um, and making sure that if you are unfortunately having to uh, let go of some of your staff, making sure that you're doing it appropriately so that it doesn't come back later and, and haunt you after this. So um, definitely going to be a lot of useful information. And so I think I would like to do some self-introductions uh, for anyone. But before, I know I, I, I talked about this program last session, but Anna wasn't on the call. Uh, but uh, Anna Kubas has... Um, He's representing the U.S. Census, um, so if you have not done the census, please make sure that you do that immediately after this. Um, I hope that everybody has taken the time uh, to do it. Um, but, but if you felt inspired after this session and all of a sudden want to be a content creator, um, Anna has an opportunity that she would like to share. It's on mute. Is she muted? You're really quiet. Anna, you're muted. Yeah, we can't hear you. Yeah, still can't. Is your microphone on? No. Anna, go down to the lower left-hand corner and you'll see you might be muted. Move yes, your mouse around. Muted. Maybe her computer microphone isn't on. Yeah. 
You know what, Anna, we will go over, we'll have somebody else do it if she can figure it out, then we'll get back to you. But if there's anybody else that wants to do an introduction, if you have a need or a want, uh, let, I see you lighting up. Yay. Oh, I don't know why I was lighting up, but oh. anyway, hi everybody, happy Thursday. Um, my name is Alouette Cervantes Salazar, and um, I currently work at East LA College. I coordinate the financial wellness program for the campus where we do a lot of workshops and one-on-one -on -one financial coaching. Uh, and I am right now in the brainstorming mode to become a consultant for financial literacy for K through 12, actually, no, all the way to college, uh, because I see a lot of, um, a lot of uh, especially community colleges that don't have somebody to come in and do workshops, or if they have somebody coming in, they're spending way too much money on them for information that we can definitely give them at a much lower cost. So my whole passion is just empowering people and letting them know that they have a choice when it comes to um, their financial management habits and everything. So I'm in the brainstorming mode, but Wonderful. I'm excited. Yeah, it's gonna be very cool. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Oh, Clemencia, you're lighting up your box. Hi, everybody. I just wanted to say hello. This is Wendy uh, with Union Bank. I'm, hi, I'm also a board member with NLBWA. Um, thank you for participating. A lot of great resources. Please make sure that you check out our website for membership. Um, we do have a membership application, and the website walks you through the process, and that way you can continue to participate in all the wonderful things that we do. Um, from my day job, my title is Community Lending Officer, and currently I'm working with a couple of clients to help them with refinance because rates are really great, um, along with purchases. Prices are coming down, you know, because of this whole um, chaotic time we're in. So if you were thinking about buying, uh, this might be the time for you. So feel free to connect with me. But thank you, Alyssa, Olivier, and our presenter. Appreciate it. Thank you, Wendy. Okay. Oh, hi, Debbie. Hi, how's everybody doing? I'm so happy to be here today. Um, so I've been wanting to attend one of these meetings for a while. My name is Debbie Ramirez, um, but it always uh, interferes with uh, it's usually Wednesday nights, I believe, the South Bay meeting, and so it's always conflicted with my schedule, but I'm a licensed clinical social worker, I'm a mental health therapist, and I really um, actually specialize and um, focus on people of color, but more importantly, or uh, for me, my passion is working with um, Latinos and Latinas and really promoting mental health and wanting to break down the stigma of mental health, um, and so just kind of, I'm here to kind of learn and to really network with, um, you know, women who are um, in the business and wanting to empower themselves in the community. So I've always wanted the opportunity to attend a group in person and, like I said, uh, conflict in schedule, but I'm happy to be here today and learn a lot uh, from, from Margaret and everyone else. So thank you. Thank you. You came to the right place. Mm -hmm. We're a great group. Just ask us. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us and then just for um and introducing yourself um i know anna's having issues with her audio but we did just drop in the link um for the competition um and that competition i think they just extended the date so it's due back the first week of may and the grand prize is thirty thousand dollars so wow. if you're a content creator and and uh, are feeling inspired or maybe you can use some of the links that Margaret uh, provided to help create that. Um, looks like there's some great money on the line and I believe there's about 50,000 in total prizes so if you're not the the grand prize winner I, I believe there's some smaller amounts that uh, you can uh, be in the running for as well. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Erica Arias. I'm a two-year member of NLBWA, an organization that has changed my life. Um, if somebody is not on, who's 
not a member who's on, please, please join. I mean, this is a life-changing organization. Um, Margaret, thank you for making me realize I need to get off my butt and create content because it is one of the things that I cannot stand doing. <laughs> Admittedly, uh, I love writing and researching and, you know, doing all of my business planning for my clients. But um, when it comes to actual social media content, it's one of those things where I have to sit down, focus and pull out one of my teeth and then get started. So <laughs> um, I, I would like to thank everybody uh, for being online today. Uh, Alpha Prime Consulting, I'm the president of Alpha Prime Consulting. We are a small business management and business development firm. Um, uh, when in, in regards to the content, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, how can Alpha Prime come in and help? You know, how can we really help our Latino, Latina market? Um, I can do it. Yeah, I can. <laughs> I know I can do it, but doing it is, you know, one thing, but uh, we, we specialize in, in helping small business getting up, running startup business planning and certified. So we really help our clients, our minority Latino owned, women owned clients get certified through the Department of uh, General Services. So we're happy to help. We want to definitely extend and reach out to everybody on this call and and uh, again, thank you to NLBWA for, for encouraging us and pushing us right now during this time. I feel, I think I feel more actively engaged. You know, I, we all get together for our drinks. We all get together for networking and meeting each other. But I actually think I feel a lot more engaged now, now that we're forced to sit at home <laughs> and really think and ponder and, and absorb all this information and learning from our fellow members and, and, and our expertise and, and what we all have to bring to the table. So thank you uh, for that. And thank you, Margaret. I, I am going to do it, I promise. <laughs> okay, thank you. So it's 412. So I think we'll go to 415 if anybody else wants to do an introduction. Hi. Oh, can you see me? I'm Catherine. Oh, no, oh, here. Hi, ladies. Hi, Hello. Catherine. Hi, how are you? Oh, my video keeps going on. Um, I'm Catherine Francis. I love you guys, love you guys. Uh, my company is the Diva Group, and I do facilitation workshop for EDGE, which is the Southern California Edison. Done some work with you guys and some presentations with you guys. This was great, great information, and it helped me because um, I do have a lot of content because I do a lot of the supplier diversity training, and my goal is to help businesses stay on top of the supply diversity because there's so many opportunities and even with this COVID shutdown there's tons of opportunities for us as women to get on and stay connected and take advantage of these opportunities through supply diversity but sometimes you get uh, caught up in the platforms and so just that reminder Margaret to get back and stay focused on the content and then shift it to the platforms because I'm one of those people I have tons of content and then I see a platform and it's like oh let me do this and then the next five hours is I'm trying to figure out and learn the um the platform where there's some simple things that I can do so thank you for reminding us of that and again let's just stay on top of supply diversity there's tons of opportunities for smaller businesses through this COVID-19 even online I know Edison is moving to the virtual workshops and so we actually have our uh, one coming up on April 29th with the Long Beach uh, GL LGBT chamber and so um, helping businesses try to get online so that they can continue to get paid and get their contracts and continue to deliver that to uh, businesses so thank you guys so much for this awesome workshop thank you for sharing and introducing yourself okay one more i believe gabby i think you were trying to raise your hand yeah. over there <laughs> i know i was like let me raise it to see if anybody else is <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, uh, thank you so much. I've been attending these. These are awesome. It's opening up my mind. Um, so just a little history on me. I'm kind of going through a transition now, trying to enter into a new industry. Most of my history, I would say, is more on the environmental sciences side. So did a lot of years in solar um, and did some in personal trust services. So I'm kind of trying to gear back into more finance and marketing. So I would say, um, this has been really good to connect with people because I think as I'm trying to enter it and be like an adult learner, it's I didn't know besides going to college and like going through the regular route, how to gain this knowledge and how to get started. So that's kind of where I'm here, where I'm gaining a lot here, seeing what everybody's doing and kind of opening my mind to what's out there and what other skills I can do and pivot myself. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Gabby. We're, we're glad to have you. Um, and hope you can make the next or the next handful of, of sessions that we're having. 
I know we're scheduled through the end of April and I now, since we have everybody confirmed, we're actually gonna put them on the website. So there'll be a list and you can see it before just the kind of two days that we've been doing it. Um, and so you can plan a little bit better. Um, the other thing we did get some feedback that um, some of our members and you would like us to do just more of a casual hangout too, to get to know each other and learn about each other's business. So we are going to do that. We're just trying to coordinate when we can put that on the calendar, but rest assured we'll, we'll make sure we get that information out to you. Um, so just so that we could all, I guess, get to know each other on a, on a, on a, a level outside of the, the workshop. So without further ado, I think we're Alyssa, I was looking at one more thing. Um, Gabby, you should also stay tuned um, for our upcoming BMA. It's our Business Management Academy. Depending on what you're doing with your transition, that might also be a great um, workshop series that could really benefit you. So stay, stay on top of our uh, website events and join um, our subscriber list and we'll keep you informed. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, I, uh, Liz, I'll let you wrap it up. I think we're, we're good with that. I think we'll go ahead and close out the meeting. Livia, I believe you have host control still, so um, you can go ahead and so I'm gonna, select it. Have yeah, a wonderful weekend. Control. We'll see you on Tuesday. Bye, guys. Have a great Thank Easter. You. Thank you very much, ladies. Oh. It was very nice. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Clemencia. Okay, bye-bye. Good to see everybody.